Pete. And Kenyon Drake in the mix as well. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you're talking about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. And that one drops him complete as he got popped as he was throwing it. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. And here's the all-rookie punter from 2015, Matt Dar on now to punt it away. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory. But that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game we were playing. Johnny Unitas? And no, not, not quite of that level <laughs> and not of that age. But I remember I was looking, going for the age. I remember looking over at it, and he was smiling. And I thought, what is he smiling about? It's because he had enough confidence in himself that well, that was a fluke. And he went out and played pretty well the rest of the day. The one running back is Gurley. Back to throw. Gone. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to bring up a third down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. He's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put in. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Earl Mitchell in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Landry now on the return. So a pause here for us as well. Time to pay some bills. We're back to Super Bowl 51 after this. A reminder, coming up at the intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Larry Ridley and the crew in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll give it to him right up the gut. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. They'll come out in the pistol. On second down, here's Tannehill. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Now, Kenny Stills, he's a guy that's been vastly improved this year in the preseason as opposed to last. And what I remembered about him when he came out of Oklahoma was his ability to make big plays downfield. That got lost a little bit during his time in the league, but it certainly appears during this preseason that it's back. Yeah, second preseason game against Dallas. Three catches, 71 yards, and two touchdowns. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line, showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. 
his odometer is not totally turned over yet. They'll run the option left. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. A loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. Aaron, now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And Frank's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. Yeah, that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or a big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a nifty return there as he's all the way up past the 40-yard line. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. down it's gone incomplete and we're down to eight seconds now he was looking to get it to Kenny Britt that time and that'll make it second and ten we know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught Here we go now. back to the air golf on second down He's going to try and go deep again. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Lance Kendricks, there. And it'll be third and ten now. Brandon, what we just saw there is something we hear from coaches throughout the league. How are you going to defend what they call the moment of truth ball, meaning a 50-50, the ball's in the air, defender's there, receiver's there. Who's going to make a play on the football? And in this case... The defensive guys actually got it done and knocked it away. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So we've reached halftime at a low-scoring 51st Super Bowl from Houston. As we send you over to our headquarters in Orlando, where we check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Rams are still right there despite all the turnovers. The Dolphins haven't capitalized on the turnovers, and that means we still have a very competitive game here at the Super Bowl. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. At the end of the first quarter, Brett is found on a quick pass, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 28-yard line. Rams would later throw a pick on the drive. That'll do it for our final halftime show of the year. One half remains in this Super Bowl. To bring it to you, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. He juked him, muscles him off. Still going. They can't stop him. <laughs> and all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Damian Williams with officially a 103-yard return. And the Dolphins are able to grow their lead. And that right there, Mr. Davis, was kickoff return number 11 in Super Bowl history. And it's such a game changer usually. I think about Jacoby Jones when he did it with the Baltimore Ravens and how that really flipped things in the game and really gave them a jolt and an extra spark. Yeah, that was Super Bowl 47. It also happened in Super Bowl 48. Percy Harvin, Seattle versus Denver. And they will line up now for the two-point try. Tannehill going to throw for it. Finding time. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Oh, 
So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because tell me. That's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> and with a little breathing room here after the incompletion, I know you and I were chuckling yesterday. How about the reporter asking Jim Caldwell where he would play Usain Bolt? He said, of course, receiver at 6'5". I think Jim Caldwell knows what he's talking about. 6'5", that type of speed. I'd run go routes all the time with him. <laughs> and let's face it, the NFL, we've had a history of trying this, haven't we? The Cowboys tried Jim Hines way back when, a former Olympic sprinter. So are you starting the bolt to the NFL movement or what? I would love to see it happen, <laughs> wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Right, Dolphins go. bring on an extra defensive back on third down. He's going to go up top again. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Here's Johnny Hacker now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. Now Landry. A good return there, 17 yards, and it'll be Dolphin football. The Rams defense heading back onto the field. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. The All-Pro from 2015, Aaron Donald, in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. So they go out of the gun, try to delay it on the draw, but nothing there. Yeah, good play by the defense there. They sniffed it out and made sure there were no gaps for him to run. If you're the offense, though, you have to think to yourself, maybe I go play action down the road. And caught by Cameron right side. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Here's Austin. Oh, he slipped right by him. Tremendous return there, 39 yards. And the Rams are going to start this drive in great field position as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always thought he could do a little bit more, and that was the reason why. He can push it downfield. He has a good, strong arm. 